Welcome, everyone, to our weekly Ecosystem Office Hours. I am your host, Jinx, and joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. We got a lot we're going to get through today, so we'll go ahead and kick things off. Uh, Zach, I'm going to lead in with the uh, pocket uh, updates. Yeah, I've got a couple of them today. Um, so I made an announcement yesterday, but had a conversation with Jinx and with the foundation, and just wanted to say that the Thursday community call started to feel a little bit like it was having an identity crisis, you know, felt like all the really good conversations were happening here in the ecosystem call and it was also getting a lot more attendance. So we're rethinking like what we want to do with that. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to drive everybody to these Wednesday calls so we can have everybody in one meeting instead of splitting it. Um, and then with the idea uh, to have maybe a once a month kind of like more public Twitter space where we talk about the bigger developments going on at Pocket. I'm just trying to get a larger reach um, while still keeping this kind of internal uh, smaller space for the the voters and the people who are active in the ecosystem. So um, a little bit of a shout out and a thank you to Jinx for doing such a great job of this for, I mean, years at this point, right? Um, yeah. And for the community for showing up here. So high fives, um, really appreciate you. And then um, just stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna kind of figure out the format for these Twitter spaces, which we're planning to do monthly, and we'll keep people updated on that. And then what are other things? We're still gonna keep the builders call, just so people are aware. I think Shane was doing a killer job running those. Um, and we got some really great information out of those. So we don't wanna we don't wanna lose them. Um, I think I cut you off a little jinx there. Do you want to say something? Oh, no worries. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's kind of funny that uh, in, in 21, when I took over these calls from Alex, um, he was clearly just like done with having to support them. But they've they've ended up uh, becoming, I, I think, uh, a real uh, anchor uh, for the community to come together for some of these conversations. And uh, I would suggest humbly that we've probably had some of the most important community conversations in this community live during these calls. So I'm really proud mm -hmm. of what they've turned out to be and happy to join them up. Yeah, for sure. And I will humbly and graciously say they have been great conversations and whatever the magic is where people come here and feel uh, comfortable speaking and, and, you know, bring to the surface all of these thoughts and, and concerns has been really wonderful. And, um, yeah, something we haven't replicated yet. So I figure we should run with that and, and keep doing it. So thank you. Oh, yeah. um, and then, like I was saying, the builders call, we're going to keep those. Again, I think the technically focused uh, conversations are really nice. And I've learned a lot from them and from Shane. So I want to make sure we keep getting that um, done. And those those happen every other Thursday, um, not this week, but next week once Shane's back. Um, and so if you are looking for more stuff directly related to the protocol or gateways or uh, development, um, like software development, join us for those. I think you'll get a really nice um, group of technical people building. What else is there? Um, I think I, I queued up with you earlier. We do have uh, someone from OnCode who wants to um, chat a little bit later. And then I also want to bring up um, creds after we go through the announcements and just talk a little bit about some of the conversations happening in the forum there, too. And that's it from the foundation. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, and I do have uh, um, on code uh, slotted out for the call today. Um, but before that, let's get into uh, gateway updates. Um, Grove, what do y'all want to tell us today? I saw a bunch of chatter going on. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, we have, well, we're expecting three new chain listings today. Polygon Amoy to replace uh, Polygon Mumbai, Optimism Sapolia, and I believe the third one is Arbitrum Sapolia. Um, they are just three Sapolia based test nets. Archival is fully included in these, uh, so give them a try. Thanks. Beautiful. And any other updates? Uh, nothing else from me at the moment. Uh, Fred, did you have anything? Nope, I'm all good. Beautiful. Do we have anybody from Nodies on the call today? I don't see anybody. Any other um, gateway updates that I may have missed? Jinx, I got a, I mean, I think the big one, which I'm sure everybody saw, was we announced three new gateways earlier this week. 
Um, and my guess is that's one of the reasons why Sasquatch is here. Um, it's one of the recently announced Ray Guild gateways. I don't know if we want to create a space for updates from them as well. I mean, it's I want all of the gateways participating in updates during our gateway portion. So hopefully, you know, everyone will jump in. Let's see. First off, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, sweet. Um, funny enough, I didn't join because of the announcement. I just saw this post that you guys were moving the call or changing up the weekly calls and thought it was a high time I started joining these. So. Uh, didn't know, <laughs> but uh, just as a brief um, brief update from us, we're still we're still working heads down on getting our gateway launched. Um, <clears throat> just as maybe just a tiny little bit aside, of, you know, our approach to this is that Porter's we are the gateway that's built from members of the Raid Guild community, um, and we're engaging in this with, as a way to kind of showcase what Raid Guild has built um, and offer some of those. Um, this code package is out um, to other builders in the ecosystem, like alongside the uh, the gateway services. So somewhat of an alchemy, but built by devs for devs. Um, we are looking down the barrel of our launch, um, but we will be and we will be scheduling a demo once we are fully live and ready to ready to showcase our build, um, and we expect that within the next couple of weeks. So thanks for all the support from the Pocket Network and um, Pocket Down, Pocket Foundation, um, along with Grove. Um, I see Gabby here, thank you very much, and Fred. Um, and also from Nodis too, from the Gateway Kit. So props to everybody and thanks for bringing us in. Beautiful. And uh, shout out to Hala here, who uh, was the one who clued us into the fact that uh, with a little wangling, you could get uh, the backpack wallet running uh, with uh, Solana endpoints from Pocket. And uh, by all accounts, that is helping uh, get some transactions through. So uh, appreciate uh, the insight on that. And we've certainly spread that message out. Let's shift over now to uh, Katarina from uh, Oncode, and uh, let's talk about the proposal that they've got up. Hey everyone, um, so nice to be here. Seems like a very cozy bunch. Um, my name is Katerina, I'm here from ENCODE Club. Uh, I don't know how you guys usually do things. I'm happy to give like a super quick run through of who we are, um, what the proposal is, and then we can chit chat about it. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, ENCODE Club's a education community. We run developer focused events, anything from like boot camps, hackathons, accelerators both online and in person. And um, we're kind of here with the mission to help people progress in their careers in Web3 and um, general emerging tech areas. Um, and we worked closely with Pocket Network last year. Um, our main point of contact, <clears throat> excuse me, are Adrian and Dermot. And um, we uh, had you guys on board for our quarterly boot camps as silver sponsors, where you get a chance to um, take part in the various boot camps we have that cover Solidity, Expert Solidity, ZK. Um, these are six week um, programs that run every quarter. We get about 100 plus developers in each of them, plus or minus, depending on how advanced they are. Uh, and at the end of kind of the teaching portion of the of the boot camps that we have our in-house teachers do, um, we have our sponsors able to do uh, specific workshops where you guys get to talk about your tech and kind of showcase what you guys are up to. And uh, it's all there with the with the hope that you'll get kind of new drive from developers uh, from the cohorts to, to know what you guys are doing and how they can use your tech in whatever it is they're building and thinking of building in the future. Uh, we've put in a new proposal. It's been live oh, uh, maybe like a week or so, 10 days, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this time we're proposing to have you guys on board as our preferred RPC, um, specifically for kind of the, the big chunk of our education um, initiatives, which definitely includes um, a bigger presence in our boot camps, again, with the option, if you guys are up for it, to do workshops, um, uh, have you guys there in the curriculum, and um, obviously have the logo and, and, and discuss about Pocket Network uh, uh, in these cohorts. So. 
that's the kind of TLDR. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions or, or talk about a little bit more. Um, uh, and yeah, I'll stop rambling there. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. Anybody have questions about that proposal? Well, I'll assume that means that there's broad support. Hey, I'll, I'll quickly jump in. Sorry about taking the time to unmute. Um, thank Go you, ahead, Katarina. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be interesting for everyone because I think most people here probably haven't heard of ENCODE, don't know who you've worked with. I think it might be interesting to share any stories of any partners you've worked with in the past, um, any kind of good things you think they've experienced, why they keep coming back, any additional information you think that you think is probably not common knowledge for those who haven't interacted with you and the ENCODE team before. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, generally, we've we've been going on strong for the past four years, and we've we've generally worked with with all sorts of uh, different Web three protocols, um, small, big, medium, uh, doing things like our boot camps, like our hackathons, our accelerators. Specifically for the boot camps, I'll, I'll focus on that since this is kind of the scope of of what we've been chatting about. Um, uh, we have uh, a lot of various partners who have who've been involved over the years, including. Um, the Graph, Teller, Marlin, uh, and many more that I'm now forgetting off the top of my head. Um, we also run kind of specific Solana boot camps where we do those also quarterly, specifically with the Solana Foundation. And um, yeah, we we have great in-house teachers who uh, make sure to to kind of check and and update the curriculum uh, as the quarters go by, so that we're 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 on on track with any kind of technological updates that we've got in the in the crazy Web three world. Um, and yeah, I think that that kind of covers it. Obviously, when we when we do um, more specific educational things like um, focusing on ZK, we, we've worked with other um, uh, companies like ZK Sync, and 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 we've done things that are a little bit more tailored for them as well. Um, we've worked with. Uh, yeah, off the top of my head, that's what I've got. But I'm I'm also happy to write a little list and and um, comment on the proposal, which I can um, uh, do later today if if that's also helpful. Any other thoughts, questions? Okay, cool. Well, as always, uh, the the long term conversations and uh, the the general uh, or the official feedback exists in the forum. So uh, please head on over there after this call and uh, add your thoughts or get up to speed on it if you're not familiar and uh, make sure that you're ready for the uh, for the voting when that happens. Uh, where did you go? Where did you go? Where? Dag Nabbit, did you drop off crypto porn? You did. All right. Well, I'm gonna call you out on it next time. Uh, but that was the next thing that I was gonna get into. So, uh, in the interim, hopefully, maybe he comes back shortly. Dermot, can you give us a bit of an update on the uh, the liquidity uh, pr proposal? I know that that was uh, a point of great interest among the community. Yeah, sure. Um, so the latest is we went through two rounds of an auction process with, I think it was nine market makers. So kind of all the best global market makers. The initial ask was for $3 million. Um, amazingly, thanks to the awesome kind of process, um, bids quickly came down, terms improved and improved. And looks like we're going to be able to onboard two fantastic market makers with around $2 million alone split between them um, and at a pretty good strike price. So now, we're now in the process. We have chosen the two. We're, we're just negotiating contracts. So aiming to onboard 
most likely sometime next week and have that uh, capital deployed in the markets. So, um, yeah, so, so the, I guess that's the kind of the, we're in the final stage basically before hopefully onboarding next week. Brilliant. So, I know that that's, uh, that's something that has been uh, a constant focus as we looked at our depths. Yeah, 100%. It was kind of an obvious issue. Um, but then as trading volume picked up, interest in pocket picked up, um, and also just the sheer volatility in the markets, I think it became pretty clear to all that it's it's not that attractive for people to come in or stay in and hard for people to exit, which obviously affects um, everything, really. Um, so, yeah, we, we're looking forward to that. I think Upbit's clearly improved depth somewhat because it's increased volume and demand. But um, to improve from here, we we absolutely need to massively increase the liquidity. So that, that'll be coming soon. So, yeah, it's, it's actually really exciting. Excellent. And um, where are you? There you are, Ramiro. Uh, can you give us a little bit of an update on uh, the the progress of the AI working group and what we've got accomplished so far? Uh, sure, thanks. Um, we are pretty aligned uh, on what we are going to write about. It's not going to be really deep into technical aspects, although we have a lot on the technical side that we would like to read. We want to keep it short and, and more oriented to, to the market. Um, we have outlined all the main subjects and we are finally starting to write. I, I don't want to, to give you any of the content right now because mm -hmm. we, we, we need to know exactly how we are going to focus. So I, I don't want to raise expectations on something that we are going to change. But the important stuff is that all three of us are aligned on what's going to be the content and what's the future of the Pocket Network. And, and, and that's really cool. So we expect to make a, a really nice paper and probably some follow-ups to going deep into the technical stuff that we are going to leave out there. Beautiful. Well, Shansky, anything extra you want to add to that in the way of context? Um, not much. Uh, Ramiro captured pretty well. Uh, but the goal is really to just get some visuals, give everyone an idea of uh, what we're going to get in the shorter term. And uh, I think the longer papers that we'll publish in the next one to three years are the ones who are really going to get very deep into it. Uh, but once we do publish it, uh, literally getting feedback uh, from everyone here or their thoughts, revisions are possible. Uh, uh, that'll be really exciting to hear from everyone. Excellent. It's, uh, I'm particularly excited about uh, this line of development. So believe me when I say we'll be checking on you frequently. <laughs> And hopefully it'll be the, a lot of people ask where, how, or why Pocket Network integrates with AI. So once we do publish the first revision, uh, it'll be something that hopefully the entire community can just point people to. It's like, if you want to understand more, here is a very, um, to the point, three to five pager that'll get you on board. And for anyone who isn't familiar, uh, there's there's two basic efforts that are occurring right now with uh, AI in the pocket space. One is doing the the tedious grunt work of generating uh, open API specs that can be used in open AI and other LLMs to uh, quantify how a blockchain call is made and to include um, a Grove endpoint uh, with those specs. And of course, other endpoints as they are contributed to the effort. And uh, the other is actually building um, a uh, working models of, of how these things occur. And uh, uh, PocketScan has already published um, that repo, the Pocket Square repo, uh, which includes an agent that can make uh, an existing uh, AI or a call to, uh, I think the, the only one currently supported is. Um, to look up an ETH wallet uh, transaction or ETH wallet balance. Um, yep. What I'd like to see is if there's a way that we could um, maybe include the Grove Path repo uh, of specs directly into the Pocket Square repo so that everything published to one could be uh, included on the other. I'm not sure 
how that might work from an architectural perspective. Is that something you think yeah. might work? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the objective. Um, th there is a way to do it with a lang chain. We have implemented it, but it's not working. We, there is an issue about around that, but it will require some some work on both sides on group and also on the pocket square side to to make the LLM understand how the documentation works. It's like for the LLM, at least the documentation is not really well written and it doesn't get it. So it, it does not work because it does not understand how to use it yet. So we need to do some iterations there to, to make sure that at least uh, GPT 3.5 does get how the, how the group path is working. So once you, we get that, we should theoretically get all the all the options that are available in group path working with an LLM. So the LLM should be able to do all of of the things that group is offering right now. Beautiful. Uh, and and do you want to drop a link to that repo? Uh, there we go. You're already ahead of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm also going to comment to you. There, there is a third thing going on around AI. That's the mm -hmm. the test bench, the one from the socket that we opened, that is going to focus on how to provide some insight on the nodes, on the ML nodes that will be staked on the pocket network. We, our objective is to create something like uh, a hugging face leaderboard i don't know if you guys know it but it's really known in the llm world so we can have one of those but with pocket notes and i will drop the link to that one too it's really really early we are finishing how finishing the diagrams around how it will work but we are advancing fast and we hope to get that working by the same time that we start staking llm models in the pocket network beautiful so a lot happening for everybody uh, um, who has wondered or asked, you know, what is the the place of Pocket in uh, in AI or in the use of uh, decentralized LLMs? I think we're starting to get some really solid answers together, uh, and and in ways that are not just a sort of hand wavy. Of course we can, but you know, in actual live uh, examples of this. So for anybody who is uh, you know, uh, an engineer who understands how to build in this space, I would greatly encourage you to participate in those working groups to contribute uh, and to help get the ball moving uh, faster. Well, CryptoCorn hasn't come back yet, so I'm going to have to spank him for that. But uh, at this point, I think we've covered most of what was on the agenda. So let's open it up. Uh, thoughts, questions, topics, concerns, anything uh, that y'all want to talk about in the space? Learn about the spanking, but um, I have a real. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I just wanted to like open the floor again for creds. I feel like we had a really good conversation last week. Steve brought up some stuff, and I just want to um, I want to lay out a couple of pieces to make sure everybody is up to speed on that. So let me just drop. Oh, a little I have a here. question. I'll uh, go for it. Are you going to to do that diff between constitutions? That would be really really interesting to to read. Yeah, but I, the I think um, text line by line. Yeah, I think Jack committed to doing that. So um, Jack is obviously working less these weeks, but I will reach out to him see if we can get a timeline for him to give us an updated diff. Um, I, it I might can, be very I can easy to jump oh. in. Um, so, so my, uh, I, I missed the part before that, but yeah, the idea is that we're going to scale it back to just the current constitution and just the minimal amount of changes needed to make this upgrade. Um, the trade-off there is that there will need to be changes in the future, but actually separating that out and having a separate conversation on that and kind of showing those ch changes will, I think, be much easier given um, the bigger overall governance upgrade. So yeah, so that new diff um, should be ready, I think, by end of day tomorrow at the latest. So that's my understanding, if if not today. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see from Jack. But yeah, basically in the next 24 hours, we should be um, seeing that diff on the forum. Um, and then ideally, all goes well and depending on comments and everything else and any clarifying questions needed putting this to a vote um sometime next week okay so 
let me know if I understand it well. You're going to do two votings then, one for the credits and another for the constitutional uh, change? Sorry, to be really clear, um, it's not possible to approve creds without updating the constitution because it's that that's not it would be in breach yeah. of how the constitution currently is set out so the as part of this vote the there will be an updated constitution but it'll just be the minimal amount of changes so there's other nice to haves that um were included in the diff that was previously shared that will be not there so all of the, it's just going to be the must-haves and so it'll be a much simpler uh lighter weight um diff for people to to basically review which which should make the review much easier for those uh, considering and uh, voting on the on the proposal. Great, sure, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. It was kind of, yeah, all good intentions, but I think when you go down to get pushed back and realize it's a lot of changes at once, I, I, I think I, it makes complete sense to uh, make it as simple as possible. Um, and yeah, take baby steps where where we can. Yeah, and I think that we have a. Uh... A separate project that is, uh, you know, kind of, kind of testing or showing some additional context for some of these considerations. Uh, the the retro PGF project that uh, uh, Ben is working on. I think if if we can demonstrate uh, through that how all of the various contribution types um, are are accounted for in the ecosystem, um, that kind of helps speak to how creds is. Uh, sort of quantifying contributions uh, along the voter path, if, if that makes sense. I, I think retro PGF is going to be really cool um, for all those reasons, because it's we're just talking about impact. And so we're going to be highlighting everyone has a chance to submit um, any impact and then seeing how the community votes, where they think impact is um, is being delivered um, again that will be a, as you said a kind of a really strong signal of are there any gaps are we missing any kind of pathways that haven't been opened up um are we i guess right now it's going to be one person one vote right but eventually it may be slightly boosted for certain parts so um you're right i think the retro pgf friends whether we do maybe one two a year going forward i think that could be a good strong signal and a data set to I guess, kind of uh, to build on as we look to kind of optimize and yeah, up upgrade creds over time. Yeah, I think, you know, in the first couple of years of, of Pocket being alive, uh, a number of us were, you know, very active from a, a contribution and community support perspective, but there wasn't any sort of formalized um, structure to account for those things. And, and the DAO process for retroactive funding was, you know, contentious, I think is, a good word to, to describe that process. Um, so, you know, uh, being able to both have the uh, bounties and, and uh, sockets and such uh, to, uh, you know, to, to do clear, short-term defined work, uh, but also having this, this greater uh, method for acknowledging, you know, long-term general support contributions to the network. I think really rounds out how um, how we reward participants in the ecosystem. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. It's a really strong signal. Um, yeah, if you do good work, you'll be rewarded, and ideally, we'll get to a place where most work is paid. I think um, it's great that people do extra things, but you know, and we'll likely likely want to deliver more than maybe we get the monetary value from. However, it's um, where we do see that value is is not been fully compensated for. Having this mechanism to capture that um, and reward that, I think, is really important. I think it will become one a great retention bonus and hopefully strong incentive for those in the existing community to do more and better work and feel rewarded and have a public um, showing of that. But then also it would be a magnet for for builders um, of all kinds, technical and non technical. And leaders, thinkers, researchers uh, to come to our ecosystem. We're like, oh, cool. Pocket is a is a good place to do work, and and it, and it supports that. So, um, yeah, it can be a really powerful force month multiplier. I think um, once this kicks into gear. Absolutely, I'm pretty happy with how everything has has evolved. I got to say, just as a personal note, uh, it's it's been a long journey. <laughs> We've We've uh, gone through a lot of different options. We've uh, um, 
you know, tested different models. We've, we've, I mean, just like uh, the, the same way that we've approached uh, economic and, and technical structure of the network, um, the way that our governance works has, has traveled a, a pretty long and arduous path to get to where we are, but I'm really starting to see some things that I think uh, bode well for the long-term governance of the network. Yeah, and I, I guess I just want to like be very clear too. Like we're talking about um, both creds and the retro PGF in this conversation, and um, we we don't have anything up. Well, we have a forum post for retro PGF, but they are separate. I know they they tie together, but specifically yeah. wanted to call out these changes to creds based on the feedback that we've gotten. Um, and, and maybe I can kind of run through some of the the uh, the things that we saw last week and we wanted to address. But you know, the big one is that. Um, you know, we've been doing this process, like you just said, Jinx, for a while. And so um, one of the key problems with asynchronous work is that if you catch a thing at the end, like you're new to the ecosystem, or maybe you um, are just tuning in because we're finally talking about it because it's ready, you've missed kind of the steps like one, two, three, and four to get us here. And we realize that we're bringing people in at the end of the journey and not through the whole process. So, um, you know, some of our communications around this just missed those original states of like how we got to this decision. Um, and so shout out to Steve for calling out like all these extra changes to the Constitution don't necessarily need to be part of um, this proposal. And we can separate those out um, to make it more clear why we're doing these changes for creds. And I did drop an image into the into the chat, which kind of lists the the current state of the proposal or current state of voting versus the future state. And kind of like why we've made these decisions, I think, are pretty obvious in most of them. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but people can take a peek and let me know if they have any questions. Um, and I think the the last piece of this is just that we have opened the quest. So if you want to do the onboarding to get um, like the basics, which is citizenship via passport and um, my gateway, so the the kind of the technology behind all of these changes. Those are open and I'm going to do a, a little announcement and um, we anticipate there will probably be some edge cases as people start using it and getting their PDAs. So um, just give us feedback and we'll we'll make those changes as soon as we can. And, and nobody's required to do them until the proposal um, is passed, right? So don't feel obligated, but if you do want to get ahead of it, you can. And that's kind yeah. of like, the yeah, definitely want to keep the conversation going in the forum if people do have concerns. Um, but we would like to to put it to a vote soon. I'll be looking forward to it. Any other questions Thanks. on that or thoughts uh, before we uh, move on past that topic? I think it's probably one of the most significant changes to governance, even in its even in its streamlined form that we've had. So. Okay, cool. Well, we are coming up near the top of the hour. So if anybody has any other topics that we should be looking at or thoughts or injections, complaints, declarations of heresy. We always have somebody who comes in last minute and has something to say before we go. So now's the time. Oof. Gabby, is that really heresy, though? I'm, yeah, I'm in support. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of feels like uh, uh, the mainstream thought. Just don't talk to any children. <laughs> yeah, but children have trash taste anyways. We know that. All right, Thresh. That's that's it. Your your quick rant's closed. <laughs> Ostracized. Um I do have a question for you. I know you and Tony had done uh, some uh, some Korean like AMAs and late calls and stuff. Um, yep. Obviously, there's been a lot of a lot of things going on with um, with the Korean community. Do you guys have plans for any more AMAs or any other big events coming up? Uh, we don't have anything on the books right now, but uh, I am especially after doing a, a live translated uh, AMA, which you know, can can be a little daunting um, when you when you <laughs> haven't done one before. 
Um, but I'm I'm always happy to. I love the Korean crowd. Um, they are uh, enthusiastic and energetic, and and they have a lot on their mind. So it's uh, I I personally enjoy uh, engaging with them. So. Um, anytime we want to put together an event for that, I am happy to jump on. Tony makes it really easy as a translator. Um, so, you know, anybody else as well. Um, oh, he said bringing them to Discord was a bit hard. Is I, I'm happy to go to other venues as well. If there's a, a better place to do them, uh, I'm certainly happy to um, uh, join in on that as well um twitter is fine with me uh adrian says i'm doing a monthly ama with coin easy in the telegram group if it makes sense to merge uh, happy to join those as well i mean it's you know anytime y'all want me to come on and and talk about how much i love this project and and answer questions about it uh i'm i am always happy to tony says anything okay with me I'm not sure if ads, uh, if if you're able to unmute or not, but I would love to. Yeah, this would, might be a cool um, overlapping of the communities and seeing if we can do something. But hubs have been on my mind for the last couple of weeks of like how do we um, really kind of like mobilize uh, these groups. And so, uh, if you guys have thoughts or resources that you need and have ideas, I, I'd really be keen to help support whatever the next step there is. Yeah, and, and given that. You know, anytime we're dealing with um, foreign language markets, uh, foreign to us, uh, obviously, but um, we find that there is a, a a propensity for predators to be able to move strongly in those arenas because a lot of the the participants in those marketplaces don't um, speak English or don't have access to English speaking resources. Um, if you are presented as an authority in that arena, you can say just about anything. And the context of me saying that is that we've seen in the Korean marketplace that there are already scammers out there who are um, either uh, coordinating pump and dumps or um, saying things like uh, pockets about to be delisted. So you might as well, you know, get out now. Uh, any number of things that just flatly aren't true. Um, so working with uh, our regional hubs with native speakers in each of those areas to help be a, a source of truth or a voice of authority to answer some of these questions, I think is really important to expanding and supporting our global marketplace, which obviously is important to the, uh, to the total value of the project. So, you know, uh, always happy to engage with the Korean market, but if you're out there in, in other marketplaces that are strongly non-English speaking markets and you'd like to have, uh, you know, people who are active participants in the pocket ecosystem uh, come out and, and do AMA type sessions, just ask. We, we will find you people. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I will definitely be tapping that resource then for um, probably in the coming weeks here. Uh, Tony also says there was a request for marketing materials that people can easily pull out and distribute to other crypto communities. They have to dig up first, and this takes a longer time. I, you know what? This is one of those places where we've had a couple of marketing type sockets in the past, but they haven't really been strongly focused on on specific outcomes or objectives. Uh, ooh, Olshansky, hell yeah. Russian speaking community, if one exists, I, I as many Russians as I see coming through crypto telegram groups, I am confident that such a, a such a community exists. Um, it's if we could work on something that is specifically about taking existing English language material and translating it out to to many other languages. Um, that's that's something that that I think really should be a priority. Um, Dermot said ads and I can also help with Irish speaking ones. I mean, you know, changing eyes to O eyes in every word doesn't seem like it'd be that difficult to me. So I, you know, boy can help too. Um, <laughs> Way to offend the whole foundation in one swoop. <laughs> Oh, Neil and Isaga, Adrian. Neil and Termica, Neil. Thank you, Isaga. 
and here we go. Now, now we've, now uh-huh. we've go. and and shout out to all my uh, my Welsh people. We'll get uh, we'll get a Welsh Gaelic and and Manx community <laughs> going as well. It's going to be huge. <laughs> yeah, but the Celt, the Celtic mass of um, the United Nations. <laughs> All the billion of, people total. Uh, yeah, of na- native Irish speakers, even in the country of five and a half million yeah. native Irish speakers are probably <laughs> less than a hundred thousand. But you know, we we got to nail it where we have our edge. So uh, yeah, let's bring it on. <laughs> but but I do think no, that I... we we have a missed opportunity here in that uh, uh, it's it's not just about uh, outreach to other languages. Um, in regards to new marketing or regional hubs or things along that line, we have a ton of content in English that has never been translated into any other language. For everyone yeah. who speaks a language other than English, this is a significant opportunity to help spread that message and one that I think will be broadly supported in requests for sockets and things along that line. So I, I just jumping in quickly, I completely agree. Um, I am working on a, a messaging book at the moment. Um, I've been working with a couple of people to put together kind of ad hoc packs of information for different different reasons. Um, so I can, if there is somebody in this call that wants to put their hand up um, to work with me on it, I would love to work with you or I can maybe look for somebody else who can, who can support. Um, but I think it's a great initiative. I am very keen to, to help put together that, that pack. Hell yeah. Coffee, Coffee crusher. crusher. Yep. Feel free to DM me. My DMs are open. Let's chat. We'll do ads. We've uh, we're actually uh, I think we've got a solution for this. Um, but I will DM you and explain it in more detail. A very seamless translation, but one of the d- problems with it is dialect. We're testing with it right now, but it is it could be a, a, a really good solution and it's something that we're very excited to get started with, with Pocket, but I will, I will DM you about that. That's good. Sounds good. Look forward to it. I love it when we get quick, rapid solutions to movement forward in these calls. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other final thoughts, given the context of this call today, I'm going to go ahead and share my one good Irish joke. Uh, An Irishman is coming to meet his friend in America after not seeing him for years and years. And when he shows up, uh, his American friend is wearing a a mid-calf length leather trench coat, which is uh, completely uh, out of fashion for what uh, the Irish friend is used to. So he, he asks him, what are you wearing? And his American friend says, Calvin Klein. And he says, circus claim more like it. That's awful. <laughs> All of my jokes are awful, but uh, I'm... <laughs> Terrible. You, you keep the accents going. Maybe we'll ro- ro- rotate, rotate the, um, the accents we do every, every week to be fully inclusive. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Well, it's we are at the top of the hour. So unless anybody's got a last minute thought they'd like to add in, we'll go ahead and call it here. Always a pleasure spending time with all of you. And uh, we will see you again next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks all.